Hello and welcome back to the channel. Take a blanket, put on those headphones and enjoy the journey. What are cats? No, this is not a philosophical question, but more a question of biology. Before we travel any further in the scientific knowledge about cats, it is important to determine which cats we are going to be talking about. With cats, I mean the domestic cat, or also named in their Latin name, the Felis scotus. But this species of cats belongs to the larger family of Felidae. A single member of this family is called a felid. Now the confusing part. When we say cat, we can be referring to this whole family of felids or just to the house cat. Now you understand why there's a need to explain a thing or two. Okay, so to put things in perspective, the house cat belongs to the larger family of Philidae, and this family is part of the order Carnivora. This means literally flesh devourers in Latin. In the order of Carnivora, we find mammals that primarily eat flesh as sustenance. Besides felids like the cheetah, the cougar or the Asian golden cat, we also find totally different animals in this order, like the brown bear, the wolf or the walrus. Not only does the order Carnivora contain a wide range of different animals, it also includes animals from a wide variety of habitats, ranging from the open seas to the Sahara Desert and the cold polar regions. The presence of carnivores in an ecosystem is important for several reasons. The members of this order are at the top of the food chain and form the highest tropic levels within the ecosystem they live in. A tropic level means the level the animal is in in number of steps from the start of the chain. On the first level, you have the plants and algae, making their own food using sunlight through photosynthesis. On the second level, you have the plant-eating animals, called herbivores, eating the first level plants, rabbits, for example, feeding on grass. On the third level, you have the carnivores who feed on the herbivores, for example, a fox eating the rabbits. On the fourth level, you have the carnivores eating other carnivores, for example, a golden eagle feeding on the fox. Because the carnivores are there at these levels in the ecosystem, they keep a balance of nature by eating the herbivores. Without the carnivores, the herbivores would thrive in a way that is not supported by the food supply in the ecosystem. So carnivores keep things perfectly balanced, like all things should be. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Another important reason is that several carnivores also dig burrows and dens, which also provide shelter for other wildlife when abandoned by the carnivores. Those dens and burrows also contribute to reduction of water runoff during rains. A little nice to know fact is that the smallest member of the order carnivora is the least weasel. He clocks in at only 25 grams. The largest member, on the other hand, is the southern elephant seal, where a male can weigh up to 4000 kilograms. Now, in the order Carnivora, we find the family of the Philidae, where we find our beloved domestic cat, or also called the Philiscotus. This little furball is the smallest member of the Philidae and the only one which is domestic. Of course, there are also wild breeds of cats who are not domesticated, like the European wildcat. It inhibits forests from the Iberian Peninsula, Italy, Central and Eastern Europe to the Caucasus. The European wildcat is bigger and heavier than our domesticated variant, weighing up to 7.5 kg and reaching a head to body length of up to 65 cm. The European wildcat and our domestic cat are closely related, but not the same species. They do share a common ancestor, namely the wildcat or the Phyllis sylvestris. This wildcat has her origin in the Near East and has five different lines, European wildcat, Southern African Wildcat, Central Asian Wildcat, Near East Wildcat and the Northern Edge of the Dipitan Plateau Wildcat. A genetic examination of the Phyllis sylvestri species revealed that our domestic cat derived from the Near Eastern Wildcat with the Latin name Phyllis sylvestris libica. As of 2021 there are an estimated 220 million owned domestic cats in the world. This is a huge number and it makes pet cats the second most cat pet behind dogs. To be clear, when I say cat, Further down this video, I mean the domestic cat. Now that we know a bit more about how cats place in the whole animal kingdom, let's focus on their specific characteristics. I focus on a few which stand out from the rest. In future videos, we will research the characteristics of the cat more in detail. There is just too much information about these topics to cram in one video. When searching for the average size, I found many different measurements. It seems it is not clear what an average cat its height and weight is. The average size of a cat is about 71.1 cm for males and 50.8 cm for females. Cats typically weigh between 2.27 kg and 12 kg for the bigger ones. Males are larger than females. The average lifespan of the cat is between 13 and 7 years old. The oldest cat ever recorded was 
team cream puff and lived to become 30 years and 3 days old. Now if we look at the skeleton of the cat, we see that they have an unusual skull amongst other mammals. As you can see in the picture, they have large eyes compared to the rest of the skull. Their jaw is also very big and has strong muscles attached to it. Grinding of the teeth, mostly found in herbivores and omnivores, is impossible for a cat, because of how the jaw is connected to the skull. Cats also have a peculiar spine. They can twist half of their spine 180 degrees, compared to humans who can only do 40 degrees. They also have more bones in their spines than humans, which make the cat's spine more flexible. For example, we all know how cats can arch their backs when they want to defend themselves. Next are their teeth. Their teeth are specially evolved to cut up the meat of prey. Cats do not chew their food and therefore lack flat crown teeth for crushing. Remarkably, every adult cat has 30 teeth. 16 in the upper jaw and 14 in the lower. A kitten and their teeth appear 2 to 3 weeks after birth for a total of 24 teeth. Around 4 to 7 months of age, these are all gradually replaced by 30 permanent teeth. The large fangs you see when a cat opens her mouth are called canine tooth and are made for puncturing the skin of prey animals. Another very distinct feature of the cat is her claws. Unlike many other carnivores, the cat has retractable claws. This means the cat has the ability to hide its claws when not in use, for example when walking or stalking a prey. This way, the cat remains undetected. The claws are mainly used for catching and killing prey, but also serve a function in climbing and fighting other cats. Also, when a cat unsheathes her claw, the toes will spread open. This gives the paw a wider area of effect so it becomes easier to hit a target. Cats use scratching on rough surfaces as a way to keep their claws sharp. Curiously, the cheetah is the only member of the family of Philidae that does not possess retractable claws. Purring is also something very specific to cats. When cats are content, they tend to purr. This is a way of communicating to their environment that they feel safe and happy. Purring sounds like a continuous repeating rattling. The cat can also purr when it is in pain. And here the purring is a way of the cat to self-comfort. The last feature I want to talk about is their tongue. When looked from a distance, the tongue is just a normal tongue with maybe a more pinkish shade than the human counterpart. But when we look up close, we see the cat's tongue is covered by horny papillae. They look like hooks and serve several functions. First, the hooks make the tongue work like a comb when the cat grooms itself. This way, the cat is able to keep its fur clean and without knots. Second, the hooks are useful when feeding. The hooks on the surface of the tongue can function as a rasp to peel meat off bones. So this is the end of the video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be able to know immediately when I upload my new video. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new about cats. You can always contact me through Instagram, Twitter or Reddit and I hope to see you in the next video.